Tracy, let's start with you. Uh, what are what is the current application process for uh, potential immigrants to Canada? Well, to apply for citizenship. Yes, to apply in order to uh, obtain citizenship, you have to write a written test, which is multiple choice. Uh, there's a study guide that's provided by Citizenship and Immigration Canada. Um, that study guide is written at an extremely high level of English. So if someone can successfully pass that test, uh, then presumably they have a satisfactory level of English. Now, there is also a requirement that they have English or French um, at a, a functioning level, which they define as roughly CLB4. And that means that they can function in daily life, they can answer questions using the past or the present, and uh, are able to un understand simple aspects of, of um, language, uh, either French or English. Now, the, the language of the test is a lot higher level than the uh, language that's required um, for a, a judge to assess whether they have sufficient English or not. Interesting. Uh, Mr. O'Brien, what are the changes being proposed by the federal government? Well, the changes that have been proposed is about not about changing the basic requirement, but amending it to make it a little, a little more, uh, what I say, acceptable to both uh, the citizens. You know, now, I need to clarify here, when you say immigrants and citizens, you can become an immigrant and you do not have to apply for citizen and live as an immigrant in this country. It's when you're applying for citizenship, then you apply for a Canadian citizenship. And these tests are for Canadian citizenship. We also feel that it is far more important that those who are applying for citizenship who have been living in this country, because to apply for citizenship, you need to have certain number of stays in this country. The federal government provides you with language training free of charge. So you have all the tools and really availability to study the English language. It is important that not only you study, but you understand and you speak. And therefore, these changes are also addressing the ability to both speak and listen into the this language so that you can be integrated into this society. At the end of the day, when we bring in a lot of immigrants in this country, all immigrants, we want to make sure they are equal partners in the economic, social fabric of this country, and that's what it's designed for. And Mr. O'Brien, this is sort of changing the uh, order, so you're making sure that they have proficiency in speaking and listening in English or French prior to immigrating. No, we are not oh. talking, no, 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 hang on, just a minute here now. We are talking about the citizenship test here, right, which is you're already an immigrant into this country, and therefore you have already been here, you need a certain amount of requirement to stay in this country before you apply for citizenship. When you're applying to come into this country as a prospective immigrant, there are other factors that come into play, for example, refugee system, which uh, which is different, then you have the worker system, then you have the permanent resident system, family reunification system. Those are different categories. They are prospective immigrants. But today, I've, we are talking about applying for citizenship. So, Raj, why this, why this step, why this change? Well, it's this, there's a change because uh, this government uh, uh, has a pattern of placing uh, obstacles in the path of, uh, of immigrants. And uh, unfortunately, uh, of course you don't, Mr. O'Brien. <laughs> I wouldn't expect no, you to agree with that. No. But, and, and, definitely and not. It's, and no, it's that's unfortunate the wrong statement because to make. you're... It's not the wrong statement to make. November 5th, it's 2011, there's a moratorium. Well, Mr. O'Brien, I'm just going to let Raj speak here, and I'll get back to there's you there. for a rebuttal in a there's moment. There's a moratorium. And you know what? I really, um, you know, I have to hand it to Mr. O'Brien. He's a uh, visible uh, minority. He's an immigrant to this oh. country himself. So it must be difficult for him to defend this uh, government's uh, behavior with respect to immigrants. This is the separate language testing or additional language testing for citizenship is neither necessary nor sufficient for an individual to be a contributor and a citizen of this country. So bear in mind, every single economic immigrant to this country already does a language test, already has to pass a language test, already has to establish that they are competent in English or French. So this additional requirement for a Canadian citizenship uh, makes no sense. Mr. O'Brien. Um, 
Let me just make it very clear to Mr. Raj Sharma. Don't bring my ethnicity or anything in this year. I'm here as a Canadian citizen. And do not talk about me being an immigrant. Let's talk about what is the right policy of this country. Anybody that is coming into this country must understand it. You have to have a language so that you can function. I have no do. intention that of calling you. That requirement is imposed Listen, on all economic no, immigrants. You also have, not while well, you're talking about immigrants, you're talking about economic immigrants. What about refugees? They don't have to have a language skill out there. That is why you're wrong. We take 25,000 refugees in this country. We take family class reunification in this country. And we're talking about whether when they apply for citizenship, they better learn to spare. They should know you they have the ability to do class. that. You don't but you take are taking class. class. Of course, we do take like class. Class. What are you talking about? We don't take family I just family need to cut in for a moment. There's a moratorium. We're, we're going to take a quick break. There's no moratorium on family class. Gentlemen, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue the discussion. Can immigrants benefit from increased proficiency in English or French in Canada? And do official languages have a role in a multicultural? cultural society like Canada's. Tell us what you think. Follow the contact links on albertaprimetime.com. We're back with our panel in 60 seconds. Yes, because it's the language of uh, operation in Canada, so you're at a severe disadvantage if you don't know either language. Absolutely not. Our country is built on uh, immigration and I have a number of employees that don't speak fluent English, English, but they're able to do tasks. You don't have to lose your language, but you have to adapt if you want to survive. At, you know, mm. like you, have to, you can't speak a language nobody else speaks, then you're not going to be able to communicate. So you have to learn. We are back with our panel debate on the federal government's proposed changes to how immigrants prove their proficiency in English or French when seeking Canadian citizenship. Tracy, I'd like to start with you. You were mentioning the results of a survey by the CIC, or the Citizenship and Immigration Canada. Right. A few years ago, Citizenship and Immigration Canada undertook uh, a study that involved nearly 4,000 people from six different cities across Canada where they uh, tested people's speaking and listening skills uh, on site as they were writing their citizenship test. So Citizenship and Immigration Canada already knows that the vast majority of immigrants are capable of speaking English or French uh, because of the results of that test which is on their own website. Uh, and so, you know, most um, Almost every category of, of individual uh, reached at least a CLB4. Most were in the six range, which is the, the Canadian language benchmarks. And this test that is being proposed now as people go to citizenship is to see if people can operate at a level four. So they already know from their, their own research that people are at that level for the most part. Mr. O'Brien, um, I've been hearing that it's, this proposed change might improve efficiency of the process itself. Can you tell us about that? Yes, absolutely. Uh, what happens is that when somebody is uh, during the process of, uh, of uh, of talking and all these things, when the immigration officer detects, finds that uh, there is some barrier in languages, then he will then address this matter to the judge, who will then go through the interview and all these things. This delays the process and everything. What we are doing over here, the federal government spends a lot of money teaching, uh, uh, asking uh, uh, prospective immigrants for free education, giving them free education. And as I said, you have a time for uh, for uh, citizenship here. So they can all go. So what we are doing over here now is, listen, everything is available to you. The facilities are available for you to study. Go ahead, take that. You know, there's some responsibility of being a Canadian citizenship. We would like all of you to be be part and parcel, taking part in the in the in the in the mosaic of Canada. And so, language is necessary. So all you do is go there, and uh, and then you come back, and uh, it streamlines the process because by the time you come, we then know, and it's a faster process that you have accepted the minimum standard. Raj, do you see this as being more efficient or less efficient? I think it's uh, unnecessary. I think the professor has made it clear that uh, language testing already occurs, that the vast majority of individuals already have functional English at, uh, at the Canadian language benchmark of uh, 4.0. I mean, the issue is, is that, of course, the government wants perhaps to eliminate discretion of the citizenship judges. And, and, and that's something that we've seen more and more, again, from the Conservative government, of removing discretion oh, from man. individual officers, from removing discretion from judges, for example. And, and, and bear in mind, Emily, I should be thanking the Conservative government. I should be thanking them because they are making me rich. 
my financial advisor should be thanking them. I mean, ultimately, the more rules and regulations and barriers me, uh, and obstacles me... they place, the better it is for me as an immigration uh, lawyer. But as a, the child of an immigrant, I know that there's already so many barriers as it is for immigrants. Why place another one? Canadian, and remember one thing, we are competing in the global marketplace for individuals. So you should we know are the going language. To, we are actually going to lose immigrants because uh, fundamentally you're already going to be here to apply for citizenship. You've got to be here for 1,095 days anyway. There's already other requirements. Mr. So Bright, you were let's, telling let's our... Let's take the barriers our, away. Our, you were telling our producers that totally this would benefit immigrants. Totally. I'm... I'm totally confused with, with the logic that's coming from Mr. Sharma out here. We're going to lose immigrants. What are we talking about? We're talking about teaching immigrants to speak language. We're talking about a small minority that is unable to do it's streamlining not about teaching the system. Them. You're using it a is stick. not about you're Let me finish. Let your, me finish. Let me. We are not punishing anyone. Here. We are not punishing. We have one of the best then why we have immigrant system in the We have to stick. Well, no, because they have to learn how to speak a language. Just because you, able, know. you have been they able to speak the language, they don't. I'd like to interrupt I'm here. To and hear what I said, I'm going to interrupt that there here. There are a small numbers that refugees and the other, the family class, who do not speak all that. That is what I'm trying to tell you. We have found that thing out there. They and as the test said, the down there, the it is there. So what I'm thinking here is you are just throwing obsession against the government when in reality that is not the issue. Tracy, is it required that uh, a functioning, a good contributing Canadian citizen have uh, this level of proficiency of, of English or French? <laughs> You know, it's a good idea for newcomers to have at least a level four uh, in terms of their language proficiency. You can certainly um, survive with less. You can work and pay taxes and make contributions with less, but it's difficult to uh, enter into the larger mainstream with less than a four. But as the survey that Citizenship and Immigration themselves carried out shows, almost everyone who goes to write a citizenship test already is above that level. There are very few people who are not at that level already. And so I see this as unnecessary testing. And I, I agree that there is a need for some discretion on the part of the judge, partly because the test itself, the written test, is written at such a high level. So I ran some of Discover Canada, the study guide, through a readability index. And some portions of it come out at grade 18. Uh, and so, you know, that's like CLB 11. Um, you know, so, so some of the material that people are, are asked to, uh, to read and study is far above what the government is asking for in terms of competency mm -hmm. at the citizenship level. So I, I think that... Uh, proposing this new test is uh, is going to cost money in the end and you know the reason the judge needs to be there for discretionary purposes is because because the test is written at a far higher level than a level four right Raj do you think this level of proficiency is required I think adequate uh, like I said before only immigrants, only permanent residents that have been here for a certain amount of time can apply for citizenship to begin with. Um, those economic immigrants already have had to write a language test to, to begin with. So is stay, is length correct. of stay, is that a better uh, measure for their commitment to Canada? You know, I think personally, on a personal level, that I'd be more comfortable raising the, the amount of time in Canada. And, and, and fundamentally, some people are bad at, at writing tests. Um, but you know, it, it's it, the problem is this unnecessary burden that's being imposed. The problem is, is that it doesn't actually solve or, or cure anything. They already know English. The test is already working fine. The vast majority of individuals already meet Canadian language benchmark four. Um, you know, ultimately, why why require this? And and we don't know exactly whether the immigrants will have to go get their own testing. I mean, a lot of the details simply isn't fle uh, fleshed out just yet. And Mr. Um, O'Brien, we only have a few minutes, or sorry, a few seconds left. I just wanted to get your final uh, comment here. Very well, quite simple. This, as far as the government is concerned, this is a good public policy. The criticism coming from both sides here is just sake for criticism. They all agree it has been, it's, it's already there, it's already happening, this thing. I think we have just, uh, uh, what we have done over here is clarify and made an amendment to the system to clean the system up. And you know, it at the end no of the sense. day, let makes, me just say it. Makes yeah, no well, it doesn't make all. sense to you, but it makes sense to me, but that's okay. I mean, so we see that you are a biased individual anyways to this government's immigration policy. 
But the point is, this is the right policy for us. We will continue this policy. At the end of the day, we want immigrants to be an equal partner in the Canadian society, and we feel that is the right track. Thank this you. This test won't do that. So We've got a lot of different opinions here, of, and I appreciate everyone's insight and, and speaking with us today on the panel format. We really do appreciate it. Thank Tracy you. Derwig is a professor and co-director of the Prairie Metropolis Center for Research on Immigration, Integration and Diversity at the University of Alberta. Deepak O'Brien is Member of Parliament for Calgary East and Raj Sharma, immigration lawyer with Stuart Sharma Harshani Barristers and Solicitors.